Greetings everyone, I am Perumal Jagan and I am happy to be here. In today's video, we are going to learn some assembly instructions. And before we start learning this, I would like to tell you that I earlier made a video explaining the x86 CPU architecture, the 32 bit CPU architecture. In that video, I tried explaining the components of CPU, components of memory, how both interacts and uh, what all the process happens at higher level. And I recommend you to watch that video before you start watching this because the, in that video I explained the fundamentals. Here in this video we are going to learn the assembly instructions. Especially when you, when you start doing the reverse engineering, when you are reversing an unknown binary, the knowledge of assembly instructions would be vital. It's essential. So we are going to take another step towards the malware analysis, the advanced reverse engineering debugging stuff. All right. So without further ado, let me bring you to that specific try hack me room. Now you are looking at that room x86 assembly crash course. Spoiler, this room is gonna have bunch of theories. So I beg your patience because when you patiently, patiently listen this, you'll be able to understand what is the assembly language and how it functions. At the end of this room, there is a beautiful uh, practice uh, place where we can see the uh, each uh, component of uh, CPU and memory like stack, registers. So whenever every instruction executes, what are all the changes are happening in every component. So that we are going to see that we are going to witness with our in, our in our eyes okay so without further ado let's begin this the crash course in x86 assembly to enable us in malware reverse engineering so it's actually a vital skill to have uh, let's see the introduction part the assembly language is the lowest level of human readable language it is also the highest level of into which a binary can reliably decompile so when you uh, when you open and see any binary you cannot understand that it's actually in a machine language only machines can understand it it's actually a hexadecimal bytes the the this assembler is all about bringing that hexadecimal bytes and converting it into the human readable assembly instructions so till that assembly instructions only we can reliably decompile any binary all right that's what they are they are trying to say when learning malware reverse engineering knowing the basics of assembly language is essential this is because when we get a malware sample to analyze, it's most likely a compiled binary. We cannot see this binary C or C++ or other code because that is not available to us. We don't have, we won't see the source code of that malware because we see just the binary when you, when we do the investigation on any impacted system. What we can do, however, is to decompile the code using decompiler or disassembler. The problem with decompiling is that lot of information in the written code is removed while it's compiled into binary hence we won't see the variable names function names etc as we do while writing code so most okay so most reliable code we have for a compiled binary is its assembly code so as i said till that assembly code only we can reliably decompile or disassemble any binary in this room, we will learn the basics of assembly and we can use this malware analysis tool to understand what a binary is doing by looking at its assembly code. Fine, fine enough. The learning objects, what we are going to learn in this. We are going to learn what is opcode, what is operand and we, we learn some general assembly instructions, some arithmetic and logic instructions, conditionals and branching instructions. Fine, right. Prerequisites, as I said, I previously made a video explaining this room, so I would highly recommend you to watch that video and come back, learn this. Fine, uh, let's finish this intro part. We move on to the next one, opcodes and operands. Let's see this. Fine, the code for a program as written on the disk and understood by the CPU is in binary format. This means that the actual code is a sequence of one and zero. Let me try to explain this specific stuff. Look at this program. I actually wrote a simple program, uh, simple C program to print the message hello world, uh, a basic one. And I'm going to compile this program. So this is actually a human readable source code right now. I'm going to compile this program and make it a machine readable binary. All right. So let me do that. I'll 
run it without debugging and I'm using a GCC compiler. Now it is ready and you can see that binary in this path. You see the, the binary called hello world. So that's the binary I was, I was talking about and I'm going to execute that binary and it actually uh, gives the message hello world. So it executes this command. Okay. Now let me go to that path and try to open that binary in a text editor and let's see what we are about to see. Uh, I think I need to go to code ground. Yeah, here it is. Here I'm opening it with a text editor. So let's see. Maybe a sublime text. Look at this. We are seeing bunch of bytes, byte codes, the hexadecimal values. So these are the uh, byte values of, these are the binary or uh, the low level values of this specific binary. So machines actually able to read this one. So these are nothing but the bytes represented in a hexadecimal format. Okay. Every byte or every two digits considered a byte. Um, let me open it with the XXD if possible so that you'll be able to understand this. So what are all I'm trying to teach here is a basic stuff. Now I go and cat this hello world and you see the bunch of machine language here and uh, I'm just putting it in XXD and look at this. So this is the, these are the bytes. Okay, these are the memory address and these are the ASCII values, the human readable values. So you may see this. So this is the message and its respective uh, byte values. So machine try to read these bytes and it, it actually understands. So that is how the machine actually process every data. So this is the uh, machine language and uh, when we uh, open the binary like uh, the binary just we we just created we will able to we'll be able to see only that uh, list number of bytes so that won't be helpful for us to assess so that's why there is a concept of disassembly and decompiler uh, came in, came uh, came in place fine now we have the opcodes so let's see what is opcode before that let's read to read through this the code for a program written on the disk is understood by CPU in binary format so this is the language that understood by CPU. So the hexadecimal codes that I just shown. So that is understandable by CPU. This means that the actual code sequence of ones and zeros. And uh, I, I explained that, right? That is actually a hexadecimal code. The hexadecimal code, each hexadecimal code is represented in uh, binaries. So let me explain that as well. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll go to that specific place. Let's see. And here, if I see that, yeah, put this, yeah. If you see this one, we see 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 1, 0. So what does that mean? So each digit is actually the hexadecimal representation. Okay. And uh, this hexadecimal representation is converted into binary when it is processed by CPU. So it converts this 4 into uh, a, its respective binary. For example, let's, let me go and explain that hex2 binary converter rapid tables are rapid tables is the good uh, good site so for example let me take this 4010 or this f230 i copy this and put it here and i am converting it to binary you may see this so it this is actually two bytes which is nothing but 16 bits so you may you see the 16 digits here so each digits here in binary is one bit. It is either one or zero. So this F230 value is converted into a respective binary value. So this is how uh, the machine does the conversion and understands. Make it as a ones and zeros and it understands. Okay. So this is how this is how the machine process every file, every data. And we are going to decompile a binary or disassemble a binary. When we read that assembly instructions, we'll be able to understand that. For that only we are learning this specific room. All right, I enough enough with the fundamentals. I think I explained it enough. Uh, let's move on to this. To make it understandable, we often club a series of eight bits into a single digit 
hex uh, single digit in hex fine so they are actually combining four digits four bits and uh, making it as one digit and uh, let me show this yeah so this one one digit is actually four bits two digits two digits are actually eight bits which is nothing but one byte so two digits here in this specific uh, hexadecimal representation is known as one byte okay fine so the instructions are the computer is executing will be just sequence of random numbers to in hex i mean sorry so the instructions that a, com a computer is executing will be just a sequence of random numbers in hex to human among these random numbers are op codes and operands op codes denotes the hex hex of actual uh, operations so this hex hexadecimal code that they are uh, trying to say and operands are the registers and memory locations on which the operations are performed so i'll explain what is operands here um, so let's see this op codes first op codes are numbers that correspond to instructions performed by cpu when we use a disassembler we will learn about the disassembly okay to disassemble a program it reads the op codes it translates them into assembly instructions to make them human readable for example instructions for moving 5f2 eax register so when you see any binary in a disassembler you will see instructions like this and also the complete line if you see the whole line it will look like this it will be having its memory address uh, on on which address this specific instruction is located so that is the address here and you can see the bytes so this is the op codes that they are trying to say the op codes are nothing but the specific hexadecimal bytes the uh, the set of bytes they are they are they are referring as op codes and also they are converting this op codes into assembly instructions and this op code means this specific instructions mov eax comma 0x 5f i'll explain what it is but before that try to understand the respective conversion so it just converts the hexadecimal into the assembly instructions so that's the role of a assembler a disassembler when you write any disassembler uh, you'll be able to understand it in depth but we are not going to write any disassembler so so we just understand uh, how it converts that's that's enough they just explained how it converts here the, the specific address correspond to the address where the instruction is located fine and this one b8 refers to the op code for instructions mov eax so this mov eax is nothing but this b8 and this 5f0000 the last four bytes are nothing but the operand 5f okay so here the 5f0000 and please note that the ndns there is a concept called ndns when you are doing the uh, reverse engineering the operation 5f is written in 5f0000 which is actually this is the value so if you put the uh, the value 0 before any number the value is still same but in ndns since it is a uh, little indian process so it actually uh, just uh, how i can say just rearranges the byte values like this 5f0000 so that is why they just arranged it this way 5f0000 it's actually 000 then 5f okay because of the ndns that alignment changes fine uh, there are references for converting op codes into assembly instructions still unless we are writing a disassembler we will not need them so that's what i just mentioned we saw that in above operation we had three parts the instruction mov and two operands eax and 5f in particular instruction the value 5f is being moved into eax so the mov is nothing but a move instructions in move instruction we are just going to move a value from or move a value or a register from one place to another place so so that's what uh, it denotes and let's see the type of operands so what are all the operands do we have so this uh, this is the operands right so what are all the operands do we have we have an immediate operand a register or a memory operand so let's try to understand how to differentiate this so the memory operands are nothing but a value when a value is mentioned here so that's called uh, the immediate operand register sometimes instead of this value there is a register in place uh, like ebx if it is ebx the value present in ebx should be moved to eax register 
so that's what that that, that that's mean okay uh, we have a register operand then we have a memory operand memory operands are always denoted in square brackets okay are denoted in square bracket there are they referenced they reference memory locations for example we see eax as an operand it will mean that the value in eax is the memory location on which the operation has to be performed let, let me explain so here is the nuance uh, eax when you put uh, eax in a square bracket that means not the value in the register it means the register eax contains a memory location and that memory location has a certain value the operation has to be performed on that value present in the memory location that is within the eax hope you understand that okay fine now that we have learned about the operation operands and opcodes we will learn about the common assembly instructions in next task uh, since we are learning bunch of theory you may not understand few stuffs but when we were doing this practice time when during this practice time we are going to take some uh, assessment in that you will be able to understand what exactly happens okay fine uh, what are the hex codes that denotes the assembly operation called uh, they are nothing but the op codes and which type of operand is denoted by square brackets memory operands okay that that's the answer all right move on to the next one general instructions before i start explaining the general instructions let me go to a disassembler and explain how the specific program look like for example now you are looking at the hello world program that i just created i i, I loaded that program into ghidra a well known disassembler available it's actually an open source disassembler i just loaded that specific git uh, hello world file into this ghidra and you see that function and these are the op codes the hexadecimal bytes they are referring they are just bringing a hexadecimal code from the binary and they are converting that hexadecimal code into respective assembly instructions and you see the bunch of instructions given here so these are the instructions so you see this do you remember push rbp moving stack pointer to base pointer this is actually a prolog and this one is epilog i suppose so this is how an assembly instruction would look like so i just wanted to show the assembly instruction a real world example okay i just gave a real world example and you see the main function here the respective main function so we are just printing the hello world so it is not giving our original source code instead it gives a nearly a, a source code so by seeing this we can infer what this what any program is doing okay so this is the awesome ghidra tool that we use for disassembling uh, process and let's get into that assembly instruction uh, the general instruction and read this instruction tell cpu what to perform instruction of often use operands from registers memory or immediate operands to perform operations and then store the results in either registers or memory so look at this the operands could be a register or a memory location or a constant value so let's show this as an example and here you see this here uh, if i see this specific uh, instruction here i am moving a value 00 into eax so it could be a value it could be a register also so like this rsp into rbp so rsp is actually a stack pointer register we are moving that into rbp into base pointer so it could be like this as well okay here this program is very simple it has it, i mean it doesn't have lot of stuffs but we tried uh, i tried explaining it uh, as much as i can with that basic binary okay so let's move to the next one general instruction the move instructions we've just seen this here this is how the move instruction is structured so this is the syntax of mov instruction so the value the first value is destination the second value is source 
so if you see this instruction then you can assume the value from source is moved into the val uh, into the destination so that's what it does the move instruction can move fixed value to a register a register to another register or a value in a memory location to a register which is nothing but the memory operand within the square brackets okay uh, let me explain that uh, here uh, you see this is the constant value moved into acc accumulator register and this one is the accumulator register value is moved into base register and the following instruction copies the value stored in the memory location of a register now look at this uh, here we see a value within the square bracket a memory location so whatever the value present in this location that will be copied into the eax register so that's what this instruction is all about as seen above we use square brackets referencing memory similarly suppose we see a register within the square bracket if we see a register value for example uh, eax in the square bracket in that case it means the it means the value in that register will be treated as a memory location so whatever is present on this eax will be treated as a memory location and the value present in that memory location will be passed to eax and the value in that memory location will be moved to destination so that's what this uh, register within the square bracket mean okay now you see they they say all these three instruction does the same stuff they are moving a value in this location to eax and they are moving that value itself into ebx and they are they are moving the the and, and you see this one uh, this ebx register contains the memory location and that's that memory location is denoted here and that memory location is moved to eax i think there is a typo here they left the 5 here so all these three instruction does the same we we can use the mov instruction to perform arithmetic calculation when referencing memory address for example the below instruction calculates ebb plus 4 adding an offset of 4 bytes to memory location and moves the value to the resulting memory address of eax so what does it mean so it is doing some arithmetic operation since it is within the square bracket it does some operation on memory so the base pointer is having a memory address and they are adding the value 4 with that memory address and they are moving it to eax so that's what it means now the next one is lea instruction the lea instruction stands for load effective address the format of this instruction as follows and you see the same format only the instruction changes while the mov instruction moves the data in the source memory address of the destination uh, source memory address to the destination the lea instruction moves the address of the source into the destination so earlier there is a subtle difference between this lea and mov instruction here uh, it actually if it contains a register whatever the uh, value within the register is treated as a memory location and the value in the memory location will be moved to eax but in lea instruction whatever the thing present as a, in a source that is considered as a memory location and that memory location value the location address that is moved to the destination okay so that is how you need to understand this lea instruction okay fine in the example below the ebp value will be increased by 4 and moved to eax so what it does it is increasing the base pointer value to uh, plus 4 uh, it is adding a 4 and the memory address changes and whatever the memory address it is not taking the value in the memory address it is just taking the memory address and moving that address into uh, eax register so that is how this lea uh, instruction works fine here we can notice that we have performed arithmetic operation on a register and saved the result in another register using single instruction the lea instruction is often used by compiler not for referencing memory location but so that arithmetic operation is performed on register and saved to another uh, using a single instruction so what they are trying to say is they are actually used for arithmetic operations performed on a register so you see when they add a value to a register automatically the register stuff cha register stuff, uh, stuff changes so they are actually performing an arithmetic operation in a single instruction on registers so for that purpose they are using lea often okay 
this is true especially if an arithmetic operations are more complex like adding and multiplying in a single instruction as we will see the next task using arithmetic operations for this operation we will need several instructions all right fine uh, i'm moving to the next one the next instruction nop nop is nothing but no operation the no operation instruction stands for okay this is what uh, the instruction change exchanges the value in eax with itself so it is nothing but nothing happens just a cpu cycle increases it moves to the next instruction without making any change in a register memory stack or any component okay so that's what the this nop uh, instruction is all about the nop instructions used for consuming the cpu cycles while waiting for an operation or other such purposes it has the following syntax so when you see nop nothing happens in that uh, during the specific execution the nop instruction is used by malware authors when redirecting execution to their shell code actually this nop instruction is often used in the buffer overflow exploitation so it is used by uh, a threat actors security researchers to perform to pull off the buffer overflow because when they they try to uh, execute their shell code they they try to uh, exploit the binary and uh, make that binary to execute their shell code they obviously need to uh, uh, pass some cpu cycles without doing any changes they just want to move to their shell code the beginning of their shell code to execute it so so, so in that scenarios they 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 often use this nop instruction you know nop assembly instructions okay so this is just a theory right now when you do the practical stuff when you do the reverse engineering you will get to know what every instruction do every instruction does okay shift instructions the next one the cpu uses shift instructions to shift each register bit to adjacent bit there are two shift register shifting for either right or left the shift instruction have the following syntax so let me explain this in a simplified way the shift instruction destination and register and here is an example um first of all let me explain this instruction here shr means shift right shl means shift left so what it does it actually uh, does an operation on a binary digits a bits okay so the binary digits is given here so let's see this para here the shr instruction to the shift right operation and sh uh, shl for shift left the instruction shifts the bits to the destination operands the count operand decides the number of bits to be shifted the bits which are shifted out to their location are filled out with zero so see this a uh, specific bit carefully it has six zeros and one and finally zero totally eight digits the seventh the seventh digit is one in eax okay so sh and shift it left it will become like this okay they are performing the shift left operation on this specific uh, value so the shift left on the specific value okay the specific value is present in eax so how an instruction would look like so let me write this uh, shift left they are performing shift left operation so it, it will be shl and the destination is eax because the value is present in eax so they are taking the value in eax register and they are shifting it one bit so this would be the instruction in this case so let me yeah, let me write this okay so this would be the instruction so what it does it actually shifts the bits to the left side and let's see the answer the outcome of this you see the one is actually shifted from seventh bit to sixth bit and you see this and the seventh bit became zero so that is actually another important thing in this shift instruction so this is actually a subtle difference but it makes huge same a uh, huge change in the binary okay fine now we have understood what is the shift right and shift left then see this one the carry flag is used to argument the destination as it is filled by the last bit overflowing the destination for example uh, 
let's say here we had the seventh bit set to one for example if it is the eighth bit the eighth bit is set to one and we are doing the shift right operation what will happen the one present in this eighth, eighth bit will go out so in that case in that case this carry flag will get that overflowing bit and it and it keep it with itself so that's what the carry flag does the carry flag is used to argument the destination as it is filled by the last bit overflowing the destination for example look at this example carefully you will understand if we have five zeros and the sixth bit sixth bit is one and the eighth bit is one in eax shift it right by one bit so it is shifting right side one bit what will happen it will become like this six zeros seventh bit one and zero what happened to this last bit that's that was set to one that was actually passed to carry flag and the carry flag will be set it will have the value one because that one is passed into carry flag okay carry flag uh, register shift instructions are used instead of multiplication and division by two or power of two you will understand this so let me explain this um, you will understand when i explain this for example if I have four ones, as I said in my previous video, um, like this one, two, four, and eight. If all the four digits are set, then you need to add all these values eight, four, two, one, fifteen. The fifteen is nothing but the hexadecimal representation of F A B C D E F. Yes, F. So so the f the hexadecimal digit f is nothing but four ones okay so here uh, they actually try to explain whenever there is a shift shift operation happens either it's right side or left side uh, it have that, that there will be some multiplication or division operation occur so let me explain this for example uh, we have the value of triple zero one which is nothing but the value one when there is a shift left operation what will happen the this one will be shifted to this this place so it will be like this now what is the value of this it will become two earlier it was one so one became two so what happened when there is a shift left the one is multiplied by two when there is a shift right operation the one will be i mean the two will be divided by two so there is either a two to the power of n a multiplication operation or a division operation so it will happen whenever that shift right or shift left happens so it is actually a subtle thing it's a nuance so you need to understand this um, hopefully we will be able to understand it when we are practicing it okay fine uh, i'm moving to the next one rotate instruction so there is a minor difference between this shift and rotate instruction uh, it is also shifting the bits but uh, whatever the, uh, the 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 value is shifted it will not go out of that it will not go out to carry flag instead it will just come this side so let me explain this uh, for example I'll, I'll just draw it again uh, i'll remove the previous stuff okay now we have this value and we are just shifting it to right so what will happen in earlier condition it will go out in shift in, in shift statement in shift instruction it will go out to carry flag register but here in rotate instruction what will happen this one will come to this place so it will become like this one zero 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 seven zeros at the end one more zero so it will become like this after the rotate instruction the ro or rol rotate right rotate left and the same stuff um, the destination value on which register to be considered and how many bits to be uh, moved either left or right based on this instruction okay fine uh, i hope you you understood this properly so there is a minor difference only between this uh, rotate and the shift instruction fine so let's try to answer these questions in mov eax ebx 
which register is destination operand eax is the destination ebx is the source so eax should be the answer and what instruction performs no action no operation nop that's the instruction performs nothing it just increases the cpu cycle fine uh, moving to the next one flags so let's see what are all the flags in x86 assembly language the cpu has several flags that indicate outcome of certain operations and conditions these flags are bits in a special registers known as flag register there is a register called flag register we have seen this in our uh, previous video uh, x86 cpu uh, overview cpu architecture and in this specific register contains various bits each bits are a specific flags you can see the list of flags given here but before that each flag let's read this each flag represents a specific condition or result of most recent arithmetic or logic operation uh, here is a table with the most common flags in the x86 assembly and look at this the first one carry flag cf so at the end of that uh, shift operation this flag was set to one okay that's what uh, given here and the parity flag sets if the least significant byte of a result contains even number of one bit so i explained what is the most significant and the least significant bits and bytes in my previous video as i said i, I would highly recommend to watch that one then auxiliary flag set if a carry out or borrow is required from uh, 3 bit 2 i mean bit 3 to bit 4 uh, these are all the theory if you read this you will definitely forget all these things unless you practically experiment and uh, practically disassemble and see the stuff what is happening the zero flag so result if, if the result of operation is zero then this flag is set and the sign if the result of operation is negative then the sign flag is set overflow if there is a sign arithmetic overflow then this flag is set direction determines the direction of the string process instructions if df equal to 0 the string is process, processed forward if df equal to 1 the string is processed backwards so this specific uh, flag register this specific flag uh, determines the direction of the string process simple okay interrupt enable if it sets to 1 it enables maskable hardware interrupts it is 0 then interrupts are disabled all right so you just know this just read this and uh, just keep in mind uh, maybe it will be helpful when you are doing the reverse engineering flags can be used in conditional jumps and are crucial for implementing conditional branching in assembly code for example you might only jump to a special address a specific address if a certain flag is set or cleared uh, i hope you 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 came across the if statement when you are developing when you are creating a program if you are meeting a specific uh, scenario then the certain thing will happen if you are not meeting that specific uh, thing then it will not happen so this conditional jumps it is similar to that similar to if statement okay so we will we will learn that uh, when we are uh, reading this conditional and branching stuff fine let's try to answer some questions which flag will be set if the result of operation is zero? Zero flag, simple. And the which flag will be set if the result of operation is negative? That is nothing but the sign flag. Yes, F. Yeah, simple. Moving to the next one, arithmetic and, uh, excuse me. Moving to the next one, arithmetic and uh, logical instructions. Arithmetic operations are performed by CPU using arithmetic instruction. Uh, in this task we will go through this adding addition subtraction multiplication division so we will learn all these stuffs here uh, the syntax for the addition operation look like this add so the first value is destination and the last value is the value so which value we are going to add that will be given here and the destination in which we are going to add this value okay and the subtraction which is similar syntax but the value subtracted from the destination so the value is given here and it will be subtracted from this specific destination so this is how this subtraction instruction work in the above example 
the value can be either fixed value constant or a register okay so the value that's what they're trying to say it could be a value or a register okay for a, for subtraction operation the zero flag is set if the result of subtraction is zero for example if we are actually subtracting uh, one value with the same value obviously the result will be zero in that case zero flag will set if a destination is smaller than a subtracted value the carry flag is set so these are all the things that you need to understand these are all the subtle things the destination is smaller and it is subtracting a value from a smaller value even a even smaller value it will create some negative stuff so it will set the carry flag and also i think it will set the sign flag because it gives the negative results okay so these are all the things you need to know and the moving to the next one multiplication and division instruction the multiplication and division operations use eax and edx register so this is a mandatory thing to know accumulator register and the d register okay uh, therefore we will have to look at the last instruction that manipulated these registers for every multiply and divide operation fine uh, whenever you are doing that uh, division operation you see you will get two values quotient and remainder so to to hold those two values we will use this eax and edx registers okay uh, first let's see the multiplication multiplication uh, instruction the multiply instruction has the following format so it's a simple mul value okay it multiplies the value with eax and stores the result in edx eax as 64 bit value two registers are required here because the result of multiplying 2 into 32 bits value will definitely be greater than 32 bit so we will need two registers for that to hold that so i think uh, what they are trying to say the value is nothing but a register so they are actually multiplying that register with itself so that's what it denotes i get that's what it denotes i suppose the value can be another register or a constant or an immediate operand so the value could be a register it could be a memory location could be a memory operand or it could be a constant okay uh, fine um, let's move on to the next one the division the division instruction the case is opposite it divides the 64 bit value in edx and eax and saves the result in eax and the remainder in edx so whenever we are uh, handling this multiplication and division operation we must look this edx and eax register before okay because the operations performed on these two registers only okay now the next one increment and decrement instructions as the name itself suggests it it, it performs some incrementing and decrementing operation uh, the operand register by one so it is actually a register <coughs> excuse me um, in this instruction the operand is actually a register so it actually performs the increment of uh, one or two uh, i mean increment or decrement of value one so that's what it says it's actually a simple one fine uh, the logic instruction when we see the logical instruction the operation is performed on the binary digits bits uh, for example let's see this and so before that so let underst let's understand what is the difference between and or xor operation or not operation so let's see first of all the and operation so let me okay now and operation okay and operation is actually like this for example if we have the values inputs of 0 and 0 0 and 1 1 and 0 1 and 1 and operation is simply performing the multiplication 0 into 0 0 0 into 1 0 1 into 0 0 1 into 1 1 so this is what the result of and operation sorry this is what the result of and operation okay and or operation is actually an addition operation so let's do that 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 when we add 0 with 0 the value remains 0 1 and 0 we add value is 1 sorry 0 and 1 value is 1 1 and 0 value is 1 1 and 1 value is 1 you should not say 2 because it's a binary digit so assume 
I mean, I'm just giving a simple way to remember this operation. Uh, one, one, one. Okay. It cannot be a negative. It cannot be zero. So one. So this is the result of OR operation. Okay. Now let's move on to this XOR operation. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. If we have these two bytes zero, zero in XOR operation, if it is the same value, then it is zero. If the input contains similar value, the same value, it is zero. If the input contains different value, then it is one. So this is how the XOR operation works. The XOR operation is actually an essential operation. It is actually uh, uh, involved in some encryption. Uh, I might you have, you have heard the XOR encryption. I actually did some a uh, few videos on XOR encryption in past. So this is the XOR instruction. Then the next one is not. These are all the logical operation. The operation performed on the binary digits. Okay. Now the not operation is very simple. If it has zero, it is one. If it has one, it is zero. It just performs the inverse operation. Okay. So that is the uh, basic of uh, the logical operations of and or XOR and not. Now let's see how this operation is performed on uh, uh, in, in assembly. We see the instruction, it's obvious uh, and instruction. Uh, we are actually performing and operation between this value and the value present in this register, accumulator register, the last 8 bits of accumulator register. And here is a 8 bit of 7C. Okay. Now, when we perform this, it actually converts this uh, hexadecimal value to binary and it converts the value of this AL register to binary, binary digit. So it will be like this. So it, then it performs the end operation between the each positions of each bit positions. And at the end, uh, for example, if it performs the operation between these two, the first value is 0, here the first value is 1. So 0 and 1 and operation is 0, the result is 0. So obviously the result will be like this. Okay. And when you convert the result, the binary digit into hex, you will get this value. So this will be the result of the instruction and. Okay. So this is the and instruction. And our instruction is similarly, you convert the value into binary digit and performs the our operation between the bits. Okay. And the next instruction is not. It is just taking one value, doing the inverse of that value. For example, the first here the first four bits are one, last four bits are zero. The most significant bits are one, least significant bits are zero. And it is doing the inverse operation, making it as the most significant bits zero, least significant bits one. So this is the not instruction or the not operation. And the XOR operation, as I said, if the values are similar, the result will be 0. The XOR operation returns 1 if both inputs are opposite. If the returns 0, the both inputs are same. The operation is performed XOR operation in assembly language. Okay. Uh, yeah. Look at this. The XORing a register with itself returns 0. If you want to make any register 0, then I think... Uh, uh, this operation is involved. Therefore, the XOR instruction is often used to zero a register. If you want to make a value of register zero, then the XOR operation is used. They are just XORing that register with itself. So the result will automatically become zero. Fine. Uh, the subtraction operation, which flag is set if the destination is smaller than the subtracted value? Um, the carry flag. That's what's said. That's what's said. Uh, which instruction is used to increase the value of register? I and C increment. And do the following instructions have the same result? What happens here? They are actually subtracting a register with it, sorry, they are actually XORing a register with itself. XOR operation. If the inputs are same, the value will be same. Value will be zero. So the, the result of this operation will be zero. Let's see this one. Uh, and what happens? The result will be 
um, result, the result will be sent to the EAX register. So the EAX register will be containing the result of 0 here in this instruction. And what about this? It is moving the value 0 to EAX. So the same operation. At the end of these two operations, the EAX value will be 0. So yeah would be the answer. Fine. Moving to the next one. Condition, conditional and branching. So let us read and understand what it is. Conditional. A CPU often must determine if two values are equal or greater than or less than each other. To perform such operation, CPU uses some conditional instructions. And this task will discuss conditional, instruction of, conditional instructions of x86 assembly. The first one, the test instruction. So let us see what is test instruction. The test instructions perform bitwise and operation. When the bitwise is mentioned, you need to convert that value into binary digit, the bit, and you need to perform operation on the bits. Okay. So the test is similar to the and operation. It performs the bitwise and operation. Instead of storing the result in a destination operand, as the and instruction does, it sets the zero flag if the result is zero. So here is the subtle difference between this test instruction and the and instruction. I have explained the and instruction, the value, the result is stored in that uh, destination register. But the test instruction, it is not storing the value in the register. Instead, it it makes, it, it defines the value of a flag. It sets the flag. If the result is zero, it sets the zero flag. Okay. The instruction is often used to check if the operation has null value. For example, by testing operant against itself, this is done because a fewer bytes to use. Okay. So if if you are if you are trying to uh, use the test instruction against a register, uh, doing the uh, against the same register, then the result will become zero, uh, similar to the undo operation on uh, a register against the register. Okay. Now what will happen? The source and destination same, and the instruction is uh, test. What will happen? The zero flag uh, zero flag is set because the result is zero. Simple. And the next one is CMP compare instruction. This instruction you will tend to see often. This is actually a widely used instruction. It does the comparison. It compares the two values. For that, what operation it use? Let's see that. Based on the result, compare instruction compares two operands and set the zero flag or carry flag respectively. Okay. If, if both are same, then the zero flag is set. If there is a difference, if the, uh, uh, it, it, it actually does the subtraction operation. The com compare the compare instruction is does the subtraction. So what it does, uh, the only difference is that the operands are not modified. The zero flag is set. So at the end of both this test and compare instruction, only the flags are set, not the register values getting changed. It it, it is actually performing the subtraction operation. If the source operand is greater than the destination operand, the carry flag is set, which means the negative and also the sign value is set. Sign flag is set. The source is greater than destination because uh, we are detecting, we are, uh, I mean, uh, detecting the source value from the destination. So obviously uh, there is a negative value. So the carry flag is set. Fine. So let's see the branching. When there is no branching, the instruction pointer goes from one instruction to another instruction in order that placed in the memory. Uh, let me see this uh, disassembler. You see the memory address. When one instruction is thus, uh, one instruction is done, it is moving to the next one. The next instruction's address is this one. So this will be present on EAP when this push instruction is being executed. Similarly, whenever the, uh, the next instruction is passed, the EAP keeps changing. But when the CPU wants to change from one instruction to another instruction, it wants to jump by skipping the uh, remaining, I mean, uh, by skipping the uh, next subsequent instructions. In that case, the jump instruction is used. It is actually jumping from one, one instruction to another instruction by, by skipping few instructions. In that, in that case, only the jump instruction is used. It is simple. The syntax is simple. Jump instruction is used with the location where it needs to jump. 
So what will happen whenever the jump instruction is called, it updates the EIP instruction pointer to this location. Okay, so that's the update is happening. And conditional jumps. Now we have seen the jump instruction. Sometimes uh, there might be some condition to perform the jump operation. For example, uh, if the value, if, similar to if statement, if the value is equal to specific value, then jump. If it is not equal, don't jump. Like that, there is a condition before it does the jump operation. Often the code requires move the specific condition. Okay, I mean, I think that's what they are trying to explain. I don't want to confuse you anymore. And look at these instructions. JZ, which is nothing but jump if zero flag is set. Z for zero flag. Jump if zero flag is not set. This is actually another instruction. And JE, jump if equal. Jump if not equal. Jump the destination is greater than the source. Jump if destination is lesser than. Jump if destination is greater than or equal to source. Jump if destination is lesser than or equal to. So all these instructions are with respect to the destination. Okay, keep that in mind. And J A is jump if above. I'm I'm not quite sure what it does. Maybe when we do uh, some advanced assembly, a uh, disassembling in future, we will get to know this. Which flag is set as a result of test instruction being zero? Uh, zero flag. That's very simple. Which of these below operations use subtraction to test the value of values uh, 1 or 2? Compare instruction or test instruction? Test instruction is actually uh, doing the end operation on bits. It does bitwise end. But compare, uh, compare instruction is working based on uh, subtraction. So 1 would be the answer. Fine. The next one, which flag is used to identify whether a jump will be taken or not after JZ or JNZ instruction? Which flag is used to identify whether jump will be taken? Jump 0 or not 0. So, 0 flag is used here to identify whether to jump or not. So, 0 flag is the answer. So, they gave the hint here. JZ, JNZ. Jump 0, jump not 0. Fine. Uh, the next one, stack and function calls. We are about to end. We are about to uh, move to this practice time. But before that, let's finish this small part. Stack. I already explained the stack in my previous video. So go and watch that and, and I'm, I'm mentioning it again. I've done this room. Uh, we learned about the stack and its significance. We also learned some about some of the registers used to reference the location of the stack in memory, stack pointer and base pointer. The stack in the stack is functioning based on the LFIO, last in first out memory. This means that the last variable pushed on to stack, the first will be popped out. So the same stuff that we that we have learned so far. So let's see what is the assembly instruction for that respective stack operation. First one is the push instruction. So what happens? The push instruction has the following syntax. It is just pushing a source. As mentioned earlier, the push instruction is will push the source operand into the stack. So what gets? So it gets the value from this source, and it is actually pushing that source value to stack. So that's what this operation does. Okay, the value of operand is stored in a memory location pointed by the stack pointer. Effectively become the new top of the stack. The stack pointer is then adjusted and decremented to reflect the updated top position of the stack. Um, I mentioned in my previous video that stack grows backwards, stack grows negatively. So whenever you are adding a value into the stack, the, the address gets reduced, the stack pointer gets reduced. Um, it, it is actually moved to the top of the stack. The stack pointer will always present on top of the stack. So okay, to track the uh, list of uh, uh, values added into the stack. The following instruction also push, pushes all general purpose registers to stack. Look at this instruction, push A, which means push all. So what it does, it actually push all the general purpose register values into stack. So that's what it does. Whenever you witness this instruction, then you can assume, you can deduce that someone is manually pushing all these stuffs 
into the into the stack so it is not um, uh, a generic case when there is a human intervention this kind of instructions happen then push ad push all double words double words means 32 bit values push all 32 bit registers so each register contain a d word a 32 bit value so all these register values push it into stack so that's when this uh, specific instruction is uh, used then the pop instruction um, similar to this sim i mean similar to i mean opposite to push the pop instruction is actually taking the value out of the stack so what it does it is taking a value out of the stack and it is putting into the destination okay that's what happened in the pop instruction similar to push a push ad pop instruction the pop a and pop ad does the same stuff it is actually popping out all the register values out of the st stack and here it is actually popping out all the 32 bit register values out of the stack so the similar stuff fine the last one call instruction what the call instruction does the call instruction used by the assembly language for perfor performing function calls to perform specific task whenever in source code if you define a function if we use main function to call that uh, specific function that we defined right we use the function calls similarly in assembly instruction also to perform the function call it uses an instruction called call okay that's the instruction simple depending on the calling convention the arguments are placed on stack or register in the function call the function prolog prepares, prepares the stack by adjusting the ebp and esp and pushing the return address to the stack similarly when punch, function returns the epilog restores the stack for caller function so this is actually the explanation of uh, prolog and epilog that we already discussed in our previous video fine uh, let's answer these questions and move on to that uh, practical stuff which instruction is used per, per, for performing function call it's call and which instruction is used for push all registers into the stack push a push all okay fine this is done now let's move to that practice time uh, here i don't want to read all these stuffs okay you, you don't understand all these stuffs unless we go and see this specific site that they created they actually built this site uh, in uh, an, an, an amazing way it actually explains it it helped me to understand how every uh, stack register or every uh, uh, flag register changes whenever every instruction is performed okay now let's start this it is actually giving the guide how to see this okay i go and open this in a separate pane yeah this is better instead of having this split screen okay fine now look at this assembly emulator here you see the set of instructions so these are all the assembly instructions that we have learned so far and there are five set of assembly instruction now we are in the arithmetic code so it does some arithmetic operation if i move go if i go to move instruction it has some move operations and stack it does some operation on stack and compare and test instructions are given here and lea instruction is given here now let's start with this arithmetic code okay um, we see the instructions here and you see the list of registers and the flags here so if any flag is set this will be checked like this okay now the memory placeholders has the memory address this column says the memory address and this one is actually the value present in that memory location okay then the stack finally the stack and also its respective values so this is the bottom of the stack this is the top of the stack so it actually grows backwards you can see the maximum address and i mean uh, the higher address and the lower address so it is growing backwards okay so you need to understand this structure before we try each instruction okay now if i play this if i run this program uh, if i click this it will execute all this instruction and these values will be changed respectively 
now see it, it, it executes instructions one by one uh, I think you are not able to see the stack here let me minimize this page now you are able to see this fine okay now when I click this play button everything happened uh, in a second now if I want to learn what exactly happens I'm just clicking this specific button to see each instruction and see what changes happens fine now first one moving the 20 the value 20 to EAX register so obviously we will see the value of 20 in this register so let's click that and you see this value is 20 and you see the EAP got changed the value became 1 because that is the that is where the next instruction is located so the EAP is changed the instruction pointer is changed now I am moving to the next one the value of 30 moved to EBX so the it moved to EBX register fine now the, the adding operation so it is adding the value of EBX to EAX so EBX to EAX 30 plus 20 it become 50 and the value is stored in EAX now at the end of the next instruction the EAX value will become 50 let's see that and you see it become 50 and instruction pointer changed to 3 so that's the third instruction next one is NOP no operation so it won't make any change in either register or stack so let's see that it is not it is not changing anything simply that EAP increases CPU cycle increases again this is what this only changes no changes happening here the next one subtraction so it is subtracting the value EBX from EAX and storing the result in EAX so what happened uh, earlier the EBX value was 30 and it subtracted the value 30 from EAX earlier the value of EAX was 50 because we added this two values in this instruction so from 50 they are subtracting 30 the remain the value is the remaining value is 20 and that will be stored in EAX you see the value in EAX 20 okay simple now incrementing EBX so it will increment one value of EBX so it will become 31 I suppose so let's see that it became 31 and the next one we are decrementing EBX it will again become 30 yeah and the next one is multiplication we are multiplying EAX okay so let's see that um, see this EDX value also because in multiplication we use both EAX and EDX registers okay so let's see that um, we took the value of EAX and we multiplied with itself uh, earlier it was 20 20 into 20 400 and it become 400 and you see the EDX value um, it's getting stored if the value is too big then obviously the EDX value will also be stored if the value is more than 32 bit then this specific register will also be used to store that additional value okay fine uh, now we have learned this let's try to answer these questions so this is the instruction they gave the arithmetic code while running the MOV instruction what is the value of EAX after running the fourth instruction the fourth instruction is this one so what is the value of EAX after running the fourth instruction okay I think uh, we need to we need to uh, check this MOV instruction first to answer this first question so let's try try this one <coughs> fine we have totally six instructions here and for every instructions how this registers tax memory getting changed let's see the first one it is passing the value 10 to EAX register the value 10 is passed EAP changed next one value 32 passed to EBX so it's passed EAP changed and the next one moving EAX into ECX so EAX value into ECX so the 10 will be moved to ECX let's see 10 is moved to ECX and it's it's still there in 10 so it is just copying the value move means copy in assembly okay fine the next one is move 42 EAX you remember the square brackets the memory operand 
so what it what what happens so the value of eax so whatever the value here given so we have the value of 10 in eax now now what happens the value is 40 is moved to this memory location because the eax is actually the register that contains the memory location so this is the 10 10 is the memory location let's see the memory place placeholder and see the address 10 so here is the value 10 this is the address and the value eax so the value 40 will be will get stored in this specific address of memory so this value so this value will become 40 so once we execute this so let's see that and look at this it became 40 because the specific address is contained in this eax register that's what denoted here so this is the difference between uh, this memory operand and the register fine and the next one is 30 the value 30 is moved to eax now what is the eax has eax has this location the same location and it has the 40 the value 40 now and we are adding 30 with that value 40 now it is going to add 30 with this 40 and it will become 70 let's see that it became 70 okay and the next one moving eax to ebx um, it will error out because we can perform this we can use this memory operand along with a constant or a register not with another memory operand so it is using another memory operand two memory operand operation between two memory operands so obviously it will error out i got this error memory to memory data moment is not allowed so this is the error so let me copy this i think that is the answer for the second question what error is displayed after running the sixth instruction from mov so this is the error i got and while running mov instruction what is the value of eax after running fourth instruction so let's see that uh, after running the fourth instruction the value was this so let's rerun it and confirm I reset this first second third fourth so once the fourth instruction is done the value of eax is this specific memory address sorry not here here and that's that's oh that's not the answer uh, while running mov instruction what is the value after running the fourth instruction so it is asking the value not the memory location so the eax has this memory location and the value present in this memory location is 40 that's the answer my bad fine now moving to the next one run the instruction from the stack section what is the value of eax after ninth instruction okay let's run the next one stack here uh, so far we haven't disturbed the stack in this operation we will disturb the stack as we are using the push and pop instruction okay fine now let's read this we are performing move so it is performing operation on the register uh, we moved the value 10 to eax and 15 to ebx 20 to ecx and 25 to edx so all these values moved to respective registers and then pushing eax so what happens uh, it is pushing the value present in this eax register into stack so what will happen the value 10 will be will get moved to stack let's see that and you see this the value 10 moved to stack because it uses push and then pushing ebx pushing ebx so the value 15 will be moved to stack it pushed to, to stack then pushing ecx 20 is pushed edx is 25 it will be pushed to next yeah it pushed and now you see the stack pointer is pointing this ff0 location on the stack because this is the top of the stack when you when you need to pop values out of the stack then the 20 to 25 will be popped out first now that let, now let's say this uh, let's see this pop eax so it is actually popping a value out of the stack and putting it into eax so what will happen so it will pop this value 25 out and it will put it into eax now the eax value 
will become 25 after this uh, ninth instruction let's see that it became 25 now i am popping this value and putting it in ebx 20 uh, the 15 will become 20 and now the 20 will become 15 and now the 10 will become so it will become 10 so now we emptied the stack by popping all the values out of this uh, stack fine uh, let's try to answer these questions run the instruction stack uh, stack section the value of ex after ninth instruction uh, after ninth instruction 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 what is the value of eax so what is the value here this 25 so they are asking that and run the instruction from the stack section value of edx after 12th instruction the edx value is 10 so that's the answer fine the next one we have only few more questions to answer let's move to this uh, compare and test instruction so it is moving 10 to eax first okay and 10 to ebx okay and uh, ebx to eax it is comparing these two values so it performs subtraction so it is a same value you see this eax and ebx hold the same value so it is doing the subtraction the comparison i mean the compare operation is based on the uh, subtraction function so it is doing the subtraction it is not putting the value within the eax instead it is going to set the flag since the value is zero we see the zero flag is set so this will become enabled so after this instruction let's see that now you see zero flag is set and also the parity flag was set because that uh, least significant bit set in that uh, even number so that's why fine uh, the next one is test what test does it, it performs the bitwise and okay so ebx and eax it takes two stuff and it performs the test instruction let's see what happens it performs these two operations eax and ebx uh, bitwise and and the value is not zero when you perform and operation on this value hex value you will get zero but when you perform the bitwise value the the bits of these values uh, i mean let me explain like this when you perform the bitwise operation on these two values then you won't get zero that's why the test instruction is um, the zero flag is not set at the end of this test instruction okay now moving the 20 into eax let's do that okay and moving 10 into ebx mood and the comparing this two now it has two different values and it is doing the comparison right now so what will happen at the end of this nothing is happened because uh, we can subtract 10 from 20 so there is no negative so there is no actually uh, there is no uh, carry flag is set or sign flag is set because the value is positive um, and the next one is test we are doing the test between these two 20 and 10 if you write the and operation i mean if, if you write the bit of this 20 for example let's say like this so this is the uh, 32 bit 32 bit uh, uh, representation of uh, the value 20 and let's see the value 10 so before that uh, note down here only this one uh, sixth bit from last is set to one remainings are zero i'm converting it uh, converting 10 the next value two bits and here i see the fifth bit itself is one not the sixth bit so when you perform the end operation between this binary digit and the previous binary digit you will get the value zero so obviously the value zero flag is set at the, inst at the at the end of next instruction you see the zero flag is set and also the parity value is set now the next one moving eax moving 20 into eax and 40 into ebx 
and when you perform the subtraction you will get the negative value so at the end of comparison uh, instruction you will see the carry flag is set and also the sign flag because the value is negative and the test let's see uh, we see the zero so the bitwise under operation between these two values is it is produced zero so the zero flag is set fine now let's try to answer these questions run the instruction from stack section after pop ecx uh, stack okay, didn't we answer didn't we answer this okay i think we failed to answer this so let's answer this in a moment but before that we will try to answer this run cmp and test instruction which flags triggered af after third instruction so let's reset this 1 2 3 0 and parity flag and we need to put it in this order pf and zf that's the answer um, once again after 11th instruction what are all the flags set let's see 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 after 11 we see carry and sign flag so cf and sf these flags are set okay fine before that we go to that uh, stack instruction once again because we need to answer this question after pop ecx what is the value left at the top of the stack so once we popped out this ecx value what will be present in the stack so let's see that we see this value so this is the top of the stack right now so that will be the answer all right uh, moving to the next one the final one lea instruction load effective memory uh, so we actually explained that there are subtle difference between this uh, mov instruction and lea instruction lea instruction is actually take the memory address and move to the destination fine now let's execute this the first one moving value 20 to eax the next one 30 to ebx and adding the two and putting it in eax the value becomes 50 and nop nothing happens only the eap changes and the next one moving the ebp the value in ebp register to eax eax actually it's actually a memory holder so the eax register contains the so this is the memory address of something so 50 i see the memory address and it contains the value zero right now so what happens the ebx value will be moved to this place so let's see that and this you see the value present in ebx the value present in ebx moved to this specific memory location all right now adding value 15 to ebx it will become 45 and moving value 6 to ecx so this will become 6 okay now what happens uh, the value in eax the value 50 is moved to ecx plus ebx so ebx is 45 ecx is 6 so it is adding these two uh, hexadecimal values and it will get one memory location here and that memory location to that memory location it is passing the value of eax so let's see that we have the value 15 sorry value 50 and it will be moved to one of these memory locations so let's see that and you see this the value 50 is moved to 4b so the address 4b is nothing but the addition of 45 and 6 this function this i mean this specific operand fine uh, let's see the next one load effective address now the ebx and ecx when you add this to the value is 4b so the memory address the memory address is moved to eax so the value 4b is moved to eax this 50 will become 4b now look at this so this is the lea operation fine now let's try to answer run the instruction from lea section and what is the value of eax after running ninth instruction now we just ran the ninth instruction and the value of eax is 4b 
So that's what we need to give here. Run the instruction from LEA section. What is the final value found on ECX register? So once every instruction is done, what is the value in ECX register? So let's see. Now we are pushing. We are pushing some value to stack. We are pushing the EAX 4B into the stack. So it's pushed. Now we are pushing EBX. EBX into the stack 4.5. Okay. Now we are popping and putting into ECX. We are just getting the 4.5 and putting into ECX. And 4.5 we got in ECX. Now what's the question? What is the final value found in ECX register? So the ECX register has the value of 45. And that will be the answer here. Fine. Now we have done the practical section. Uh, I, I would highly recommend you to go and uh, explore this assembly emulator. This is actually a valid, very valuable resource to learn this assembly instruction. So what kind of changes happens in every uh, component during each instruction. Fine. Uh, we have uh, answered all the questions and I didn't touch the previous theory. which is nothing but the same instructions given. So this is what, this is what I wanted to explain. And uh, it just says what are all the things that we have learned so far. So let me explain that in let let me explain that briefly. Before that, I complete this room. Fine. I get back to the cam. Fine. I think uh, we have covered the assembly instructions in this video. Hope you have learned some uh, interesting assembly instructions. These are all the basic instructions only. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There are uh, other bunch of other instructions. So you can understand those instructions easily as you understood this basic stuff. So you understood how uh, uh, the values are uh, uh, added between these uh, registers, stacks, flags, how, how these things getting changed during the each instruction. We just understood uh, in this video. Uh, hopefully this will be very uh, helpful when we are doing the debugging and disassembling stuff uh, and the reverse engineering. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this is what this is what uh, the content for this video. Hope you really found informative. If you really did, if you really learned something new, uh, do consider doing that YouTube algorithms like, comment, subscribe, everything. I'll catch you next time with another exciting one. Until then, I'm signing off. Cheers and uh, I love you all. Thank you so much.